Hi friends, I'm Arpita Karwa and in this video I will be talking about evolution of English in India and important aspects of this topic that are relevant from UGC net exam point of view. So let's begin. English was introduced in India by British colonization and it now stands as one of the India's official languages sharing status with Hindi. Its usage as a second language extends to about 8 to 11% of the educated populace according to a contemporary assessment. On December 31st, 1600, Queen Elizabeth's charter marked the genesis of the consortium of London merchants venturing into Indian trade. With this pivotal move or moment, the English language made its debut on Indian shores, leaving an indelible mark that persists even in the post-British era. As we commemorate the 75th Republic Day in 2024, English still stands as the testament to India's linguistic evolution and cultural amalgamation. Now let us look at the topic of history of this introduction of Indian education in, in India. Prior to 1800, the East India Company or EIC primarily provided English education exclusively to European employees, children and some Anglo-Indians. Initially, the company paid little attention to educating Indians, relying instead on the indigenous uh, educational institutions such as maktabs, village schools, domestic instruction, which was taught through Sanskrit and other Indian languages. It wasn't until the late 18th century when the EIC extended its control over the Indian subcontinent, excluding Punjab and Sindh, of course, that it began considering native education, viewing themselves as a civilizing force. The company aimed to instill awe and respect for Europeans among Indians, ultimately serving the commercial interest of the British Empire and facilitating the spread of Christianity. Lord Macaulay famously articulated in the House of Commons that trading with civilized individuals proved more profitable than governing savages, highlighting the strategic nature of educating natives within the border imperial agenda. Now let's look at the first blueprint of English education in India. The first blueprint on English education in India was prepared in 1792 by Charles Grant, a director of East India Company. Charles Grant describes as the Christian director of the EIC. It is a noticeable trend that a lot of questions are being asked from chronology and timeline in context of evolution of English in India. In this video, I have created an exhaustive timeline mentioning all the important years and all the important events at one place. So get ready with your notepads to jot down the same. Now let's look at the timeline of evolution of English in India. The first important year is 1696. In this year, the British East India Company established Fort William in Calcutta. It was named after King William III of England and served as a fortified settlement for the British in Bengal. There have been a previous year question regarding the same. The second important year is 1767. It was a year that marked the arrival of Charles Grant in India. A question on this date has also been asked in UGC NET exam. This is one of the most important dates in the evolution of English in India. The year is 1835. English replaced Persian as the official language of the East India Company. The year is also important for Macaulay's Minutes on Education. He is famous for the lines, a class who may be interpreters between us and the millions whom we govern, a class of persons Indian in blood and colour, but English in taste, in opinion, in morals and in intellect. Questions from this particular topic, Macaulay's minutes are very frequently asked in UGC NET exam. So be prepared for it. If you are looking for past year papers of UGC NET English, then we invite you to visit our website right now. We have provided all past year solved papers of UGC NET exam along with answer keys free of cost on our website. You can simply go and download the papers and start your preparation right away. Another important year that you must remember, not only from the perspective of UGC NET Paper 2, but Paper 1 as well for the topic Higher Education in India. And this year is 1854, remembered for Wood's Dispatch by Charles Wood in 1854. It is known as the Magna Carta of English Education in India. 
It resulted in the establishment of medical engineering law and other institutions of professional education. Another important year is 1857 that led to the establishment of major universities. Just before the end of the company uh, rule, universities modelled after the University of London using English as the medium of instruction. And they established University of Kolkata, Madras, University of Mumbai. So all these big universities were set up at that time. The next important year is 1858, which marks the crown rule in India. In the year 1858, India became the founding member of the League of Nations, British India. In this year, the University of Punjab was formally established with the convening of the first meeting of its Senate on October 14, 1882 at Shimla. The year 1882 is also very important as it is marked by Hunter's Commission. Hunter's Education Commission was founded in 1882 by Lord Ripon Building uh, during the British rule. This also introduced primary education under the Local Self-Governing Act or Local Self-Government Act, I should rather say. Here is a previous year question that emphasizes the importance of knowing the above timeline. Before we move on to the next point, here is something that I want to share. If you are preparing for UGC NET Paper 1 or Paper 2 English, I have some amazing news for you. We offer four separate video courses for UGC NET Paper 1 and for UGC NET Paper 2 English. In all our online courses, we provide you with topic-wise video lectures, with rich animations covering all topics in a step-by-step -step manner which works even when you've not done any previous preparation. We also provide you with high-quality PDF and revision notes that cover syllabus-wise topics comprehensively and ensure you qualify your dream exam in just one attempt. Along with video lectures and PDF, we also offer test series that consist of unit-wise questions that come with detailed explanation. Plus, after every test, you get detailed report and your ranking in the All India Leaderboard, which will help you spot your weak and strong areas. We cover all important topics, writers in our online course. The detailed list of these topics is already there on the website, available free of cost. Even if you are preparing for these exams on your own, we would highly recommend you to visit our website and download the detailed list of writers and check out the solved previous year papers for all these competitive exams. The link of our website and all the courses are given in the description box below. You can check out the course details from our website and even watch free demo lectures and attempt free demo mock tests before you decide to enroll in our course. For more information related to the courses we offer, feel free to shoot your queries on WhatsApp number displayed on your screen and me and my team will be more than happy to assist you. Now, another important thing that you must know about is the institutions that have played significant role in the evolution of English in India. There have been previous year questions from this topic as well. First is language institutes and language learning centers. Various language institutes and learning centers such as English and Foreign Language University EFLU in Hyderabad have been established to teach English and other foreign languages. Another important institution is the Connemara Public Library, Chennai. Established in 1896, the Connemara Public Library is one of the four national depository libraries in India. It receives copies of all books, newspapers and periodicals published in India. Its establishment reflects the colonial era's emphasis on education and disseminate of knowledge including English literature and publication. Number three in the list is Dhaniloka Centre for Indian Studies in Mysore. Named after the critical work Dhaniloka by Anand Vardhana from 9th century AD, this centre in Mysore signifies deep roots of Indian literary and linguistic tradition. It presents a historical continuity in the study and appreciation of Indian culture and literature, including the impact of English as a language of scholarship and communication. Number fourth is Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute, Pune. Founded in 1917 and named after Ramakrishna Gopal Bhandarkar, a pioneer of Indology in India, this institute is renowned for its collection of ancient Sanskrit and Prakritic manuscripts. Its establishment reflects the growing interest in the study of Indian languages, literature and culture, including their intersection with Indian scholarship and colonial era linguistic policies. Let's talk about another major institution that is Asiatic Society Kolkata. 
established during the company's rule in india that is east india company the asiatic society was founded to promote oriental research including the study of languages literature history and culture its formation underscores the colonial administration's interest in understanding and documenting indians diverse linguistic and cultural heritage including the role of english as a medium for scholarly pursuit and colonial governance there have been matched the following questions from all the above institutions that i have just mentioned so very very important to have a note of it at last you must also be aware of literary societies and organizations literary societies and organizations like the sahitya academy and the indian national trust for art and cultural heritage in touch have promoted english literature and supported writers and poets and artists working in english so that was all about english in india understanding the evolution of english studies in india is very very important for clearing ugc net english uh, as questions pertaining to these topics that we just talked about consistently come in the paper this video was just a brief overview of the topic for a more detailed study consider subscribing to a course where you will find full fledged modules dedicated to evolution of english studies in india i hope you liked and found this video useful consider subscribing and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com for more such informative videos so as i always say that's it from my side for this video lecture i'll meet you very soon in the next video lecture till the time we meet next happy learning keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com